Good morning, everybody. So we're heading today to meet Scylla, and we're gonna go try to uh, smash a snakehead. In one so, mile, turn right onto. Puff shut up. Road. The water temps are cooler. There was a cold front that came in. We were supposed to have like ideal snakehead conditions, and now we may not have any snakehead conditions. So it's one of those things. It's part of fishing. It's part of the challenge. Um, wait until a little bit later in the morning. As you can see, it's really bright outside. It's almost nine o'clock. I'm gonna launch about 9 30. the reason for that is we're fishing a tidal portion of the potomac and when you're fishing tidal areas and you're getting into shallow areas they have to have water first and a lot of these areas uh, fill up with water at high tide and they're mud or grass banks at low tide so uh, we've got a spot where we're going to launch where we can get as closest to uh, where she feels like the snakehead will be uh, in these conditions and we're gonna fish as long as we can. The one thing about fishing for snakehead or fishing tidal waters in general, uh, even for bass, is that you have windows and your windows of when you can be, where you can be are limited by the, the tide. So you have to be hyper-focused on the tide. Uh, a lot of times you just have to know the areas and what amount of water is gonna be there. The wind has a lot of effect on it. If the wind's into the tide, it can hold the water. If the wind's with the tide, it can vacate the water uh, much more quickly. So just one of those variables that you have to be aware of. Uh, I have a lot of experience fishing tidal waters being, you know, in the Navy for 20 years. Most of the places that I lived uh, were coastal. So fishing tidal waters is nothing new to me. Uh, we'll do the best we can to kind of point out the things that you need to talk about, the considerations that you need to have, and, uh, yeah, we're going to go out and try to catch a snakehead. The whole goal of today is to catch a snakehead. If we catch a snakehead when the water temperature dropped 15 to 20 degrees uh, and they're not really a cold water fish, uh, we'll consider that a successful day. But if we can catch 10, even better. Especially on top water. I want to catch one on top water. So about almost a year ago, earlier this year, I uh, dropped my phone in the water. And uh, no matter what you do for a living, dropping your phone in the water is a pain in the butt just for life. But when you make a living doing stuff off of your phone, it's an even bigger deal. So I posted the video <laughs> of me dropping my phone in the water. And we'll cut to that right now. And needless to say, you're never gonna drop your phone when it's convenient. So I dropped it at the most inconvenient time. I was out in the middle of nowhere uh, filming at Bienville Plantation. After I posted the video, one of you guys posted up a recommendation for a product that I should check out. And this phone tether from Rogue Fishing Company, Rogue Fishing Co, uh, was what y'all suggested. Uh, I checked it out. I ended up buying one. The cool thing about it is also has that ring on it. So like when you're doing selfies or self video for social media and things like that, uh, it's easy on, easy off, but this little stretch thing fits any phone case. I just took the clip that was on it off and just lashed it directly to my PFD. And then I could take my phone and just wedge it right here in between my PFD. And it's easy to grab for taking a quick photo. Um, and for catch photo release photography, uh, catch photo release tournaments, what I like about it is having that ring in there. It allows you to hold your phone out, especially for voice activation. Get it nice and level over the top of the fish. You know, whiskey, tango, foxtrot bubble gum birthday cake whatever your code word is to take the picture so if you're looking for a cool thing to save your phone and it also aids you in uh catch photo release photography check out these uh this phone tether from uh rogue fishing company i'll put a link to it uh, down in the description box but you definitely you definitely need one of these in your arsenal if you're a kayak fisherman uh, if you're an outdoorsman and um, you know for you guys out there and gals that do a lot of selfies even just take this ring off and this thing right here works a lot like the pop sockets uh, so it's cool you can I'm going to change this out to a clip where I can take it on and off and then I can pretty much leave that on there at all times so anyway cool little product So what I also like about this Rogue Fishing Company is they have a nice little handle that you can put on the front of your kayak. So we threw that on one of the camera boats for dragging it around 
um, yesterday, and you guys will probably see a lot of that footage where I hooked it over the side of the handle. But if I'm dragging a, a lot longer distance, um, I haven't tried that out yet. So let me show you a time-tested tactic for dragging your kayak through the woods. This is absolutely my favorite type of fishing. Um, and then we'll show you the, uh, the handle that uh, Rogue Fishing Co. makes. But what I like to do is take one of these Yakima straps and just feed part of it through the front handle. Uh, pretty much every kayak is going to have a front handle on it. And then you just come out to the end and just connect it, right? What you do then is just put this loop over your shoulder. I leave a little bit of a tag in so I've got something to hold so that the, not that the strap's gonna slip, but just so that it doesn't. You can also do this with a piece of rope. Just get it over your shoulder and across your chest and then just lean into it and walk. One of the things is this gets you into places that other people can't. It gets you into waters that other people can't. And that's really what the spirit of kayak fishing is about for me. So for me, dragging my kayak through the woods is just synonymous with kayak fishing. It goes with kayak fishing like peanut butter and jelly. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Hillary, Hillary and controversy, or you know what I'm saying? It just goes together like hunting and fishing. Like, you know, it, it just works. And so for me, this strap or the strap that Rogue Fishing Co. makes uh, is definitely something you should consider uh, utilizing. And if you're not dragging your kayak to get to places, you're not getting the most out of kayak fishing. Cause this is really, to me, the essence of what kayak fishing is all about. We're actually gonna go out to the left out here and then go out to that pad. Um, you'll see them start like feeding. If you throw out to them, they'll usually hit it. And if you miss it, you could probably throw back in that same strike zone instead of running it through, just pop it through and uh, they'll usually eat it again. Yeah, so we're gonna fish the whole incoming tide, the whole swing up. The incoming started around like 10.30. Like, just the, the beginning peak of it. Is there two tides today or one? Two. So well, it's no, gonna... no, no, it's one, because one happened overnight. So it's like incoming. So it's gonna be like it 10 to around four. four. Yeah, and then it'll go again overnight. The thing with these fish is like in this river you have to time it right and this hydrilla is horrible um so right now it's uh just just starting the incoming tide is just starting to come in the incoming high tide so um we have a lot of low areas very full of hydrilla with some pockets in them and the spatter dock is just kind of pulled around here so as that tide starts to come in so a lot of times we'll be sitting about 5, 10, 15 feet inside these, these uh, pad lines and just waiting for bait fish to come in so they can hit them. Um, because the hydrilla and stuff is so thick, it, it is difficult to kind of run some things through here. You can run a swim jig, you can run a paddle tail, but most of the people that hunt snakeheads are using frogs, um, so popping frogs, tackle frogs, soft plastic frogs, uh, buzz baits. Um, if you can run them in the channels, you can run some chatter baits through there. Um, but typically most people are using, um, are using frogs and you can run those through there and sometimes they're just cruising along. A lot of times they're just kind of sitting there so you can cast and cast and cast and sometimes you get that right cast and get them right above it and then they'll, they'll inhale it. Um, as soon as they hook, you want to wait and count to three and then set that hook really, really hard. Um, they swallow their prey hole. They do not chew it. So as soon as it's in there and you know it, they, they, uh, got it in there you set that hook and as soon as they set that hook they dig down and this mud is probably about I don't know, it looks like it's about two feet but that mud is probably another foot and a half so if you tried to get out you would sink um, so they'll, they'll get down there and they'll death roll and they'll bury into that stuff so you want to run very strong braid um, I run 40 pound braid usually when I'm doing this to be able to horse them out of that hydrilla horse them through the stalks of the spatter dock which sometimes can get really really thick um, so we're hoping to get on one today. We're just, we just got out here at the, at the start of incoming, uh, right at the end of slack tide. So hopefully we can, we can find some today. There's a lot of casting and watching. They're air breathers. Uh, they like to come up and, and breathe for air. So you can sometimes see their heads pop up. You can see some bubbles or you can see them attaching, attacking bait. So as you're casting, you're always watching. So it's, it's literally hunting more than fishing, but hopefully we can get on, on some today. Yeah, see, the other thing I was thinking is because the sun's lighting that bank up, 
And because they like a little bit more stagnant water, right? Yes. So the wind is against the tide. So I think the most stagnant water will be back in that pocket back there. Oh yeah. If we work our way that, that's probably what you were doing anyway. I'm uh -huh. just, yeah, I was slowly working my way there. I'm just that's guessing. Where, that's where I usually have my, most of my actions on that side anyway. I have like what I call stages with, within the snakehead season. I mean, the beginning of the season, typically, you know, May, June time, I'll, I'll be throwing uh, chatter baits because the hydrillas ain't ain't grown that back, grown that thick yet. So I'll be running chatter baits, swim baits with like underspin hooks on top. Um, after that phase, I'll switch to nothing but top water frogs, to be in fact. Um, my favorite frog to throw around is the Teckle brand. This right here is called the Teckle Sprinker. Caught numerous of snakeheads on this frog. My biggest snakehead came off this frog here. I mean, not this particular frog, but this particular brand, Teckle Sprinker frog. My second favorite will be another frog made by Teckle. It's called the Teckle Honker. Um, just love throwing these lures out there. They blow up. The blow up on these are incredible. For some reason, uh, them, them snakeheads love it, man. Um, I mean, typically they'll love any type of frog, but these are my go-to frogs here. The Teckle Honker and the Teckle Sprinker. Um, we'll get the job done. Great doable frogs. Uh, hook, hook set ratio on these frogs are uh, very good and whatnot. But uh, this is why I chose choose these frogs. They're very durable and good hook sets, uh, I mean, good hook set ratio on them. No, I just uh, spooked a few fish, many fish. <laughs> I could have been bass that I spooked. They're just sitting on the bed. There's a lot of action going on right here. You see all this? <laughs> I, I'm always steady looking around, keeping my eyes peeled for them popping up, breathing for air, or just moving around, and you'll see the pad movement. And then if you spot something like that, throw your frog at it or whatever lure you have, top water, most likely they'll be interested in your lure you throw in that surrounding area and you just work your work your frog like how you've been working it and you'll draw them to strike it as soon as you see that kind of uh, things around you that's what i tend to look for as well oh i just gotta blow up yeah let me try this again he looked like a decent one too. Got one. And that's how you do it, guys. <laughs> I knew he was a nice size, and when the first strike he did, I'm like, he's a good one. He's gonna come back for it. And sure enough, right after I told you I got a hit and threw it right back in, worked it, he blew up on it. Shaking right now. <laughs> uh, all right, awesome. Here's a snake that I just caught. All right, stay tuned. I'm gonna switch hats real quick. I'm gonna hold it up for you. It's about like a five pound snake head here. Yeah, they're very cold. But here it is. Yeah, a little four or five pounder. <laughs> huh? Yeah, how she looks, I mean, yep. Kind of thick, a little heavy to her. Uh huh. And one thing about these fish, they like to thrash around. That's why typically a good landing net, a big one, will be perfect. That way you don't lose your catch or lose the fish. 
Say again. Say again. It? No, actually, because this, this is one of the areas I usually hit too. So this like actually pad line. I just started working and he hit the first time. I was like, oh. When he hit the first time, I was like, oh, he's a decent size. He's going to come back for it and eventually he did. Let me get a picture for you. Let's go ahead and I should probably go on the other side where the sun's at, but that's yeah. good. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna touch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, I touched the snake head. <laughs> Bam. I'm gonna rub that on my PFD for good luck, and I think I'll uh my goal is to get one now. So guys, even if nothing else happens today, mission accomplished. If you want to catch a snakehead, you call a guy whose name is Snakehead Hunter. Right? This is uh awesome. This is Elmer, the snakehead hunter, not Emil, like I may have called him earlier in the episode. Um, but anyway, congrats, man. What'd you get it on? Um, I got it on a Tekel honker. Um, okay. He struck at it the first time. Now you said he, you mean she, right? Isn't oh, that a she, female? Yeah, she, my bad. <laughs> she uh, struck at it the first time, and I knew then she, she was a decent size how she struck at it. Second cast, sure enough, she came out and... Just uh, devoured it. I like it. So is that your biggest? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I think his biggest could probably eat that one. So That's a baby. what we're going to do is we're going to throw some of his other footage uh, and some of his other fish into the show just to show you guys just how phenomenal uh, a fishery is. And I like the fact that your name is Snakehead Hunter, right? A hunter is and that's what i like about this type of fishing especially for big bass and i really like it when i'm redfish fishing and that's what i like about kayak fishing especially when you're standing up and you're pulling and paddling through this kind of stuff because you're literally part fishing part hunting you know yes, and so uh, exactly. so yeah it's it's a perfect description of what we're doing here it's why i like this backwoods backwater kind of fishing mm -hmm. um the best kayak fishing ever is the stuff you got to drag through the woods to get to the spot and uh the only thing better man is to get like four more let's get them all right, cool all right. all right you know for the better part of my adult life and my fishing career um i've been a big fan of chasing monster fish i've been a big fan of getting into places and catching fish where others can't and and really spent a lot of time effort and energy getting away from people um i guess maybe as i get older as I get a little more mature, which is saying a lot for me, <laughs> but as I, as I mature, I think I enjoy the time with other anglers and the interaction and the idea sharing and the, the, the whole process of sharing adventures with other people um, and making those memories and, and seeing them get excited about the opportunity to fish with you and you're excited about the opportunity uh, to fish with them building lifelong friendships and that kind of thing is really what I focus on more now. Um, and, and maybe it is a, just a getting older thing. I don't know. I, I really had a lot of success over the years chasing monster fish and I still like catching a big fish. It's just less important to me now what I catch and it's more important how I catch it and who I catch it with and, and the, and the, the time that I decide to spend with people um, is more important to me now than a lot of times than the results because to me that is a result. If I had a great time fishing with great people, then it was time well wasted, you know? And so this is, uh, this is something I'm having to kind of come to terms with. Um, I'm still gonna chase monster bass. I'm still gonna look for that adrenaline rush like a 10 year old hopped up on Mountain Dew, but, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, to me, it's this part right here. It's just being in these places with these people and doing this thing called kayak fishing. It's the greatest community on the planet. I'm proud to be part of it, and um, I'm excited about what the future holds. See, if this was like a month or two months ago and we came out like this, we would have a lot more hookups and action. This this time of the year, coming to like the middle of October, November, that's when the bite gets real tough for snakeheads, um, especially top water. Like I'm, I'm surprised at how hard she hit 
this one earlier, usually they'll light something real slow and subtle and they won't blow up on it that aggressively. All right, so the kayaks are loaded. Um, Scylla and uh, Elmer are loading theirs. We are about to go down, make a U-turn, and head to the next spot. This time, we're in search of uh, Tidal Potomac Largemouth, and there should be a good mix of snakehead as well. So we're going to the place where Scylla caught her first snakehead. Still good shot at a snakehead, but we're also going to swing for the fences, try to catch us one of them big old Potomac River bucket miles. Right here is a Hakuai Landing, um, where I first caught my first naked here in this body of water. Right here at this launch? Uh, yes. Um, cool. Looks like there's some good docks over there. Is that where we're going? Um, actually, towards the left. We'll go we'll that launch way? here and come around the corner and straight back to that corner. There's uh, about four or five docks we can work as well there. Okay. And this is the Potomac proper, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the bluff walls over there. Um, mm -hmm. It's about a mile across it uh, at some of the widest spots, mile and a half. But there's a lot of water on the Potomac, a lot of bass and a lot of grass. But uh, according to uh, Mr. Elmer here, it also has a good snakehead population. So you've also got a really good shot at some good largemouth here because, you know, Potomac largemouth are not, they're not, uh, they're, they're like almost like a smallmouth in that they live their life in a lot of current. Yes. And so they fight hard. Uh, they're world famous, right? Mm -hmm. For the for how many largemouth you can catch here, you can have 50, 75, 100 fish days, and all of them be over four pounds if uh -huh. you get into a good school. So, mm -hmm. anyway, we're gonna get out there and stop talking about it and do it. All right. I'm trying to find a little bit heavier. Yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit different. I'm gonna throw a paddle tail. It seems to be what's been working over here. Taj Mahal duck blinds. The winds like this will make it more challenging for us to uh, land one. I wonder if those coons just swim out to that little platform just to take a crap. And if they swim out there, they probably swim out there to eat. And you're not actually supposed to crap where you eat. You know, that's like a saying. Apparently not for raccoons. Fish on! No, but it's a, oh, it's a large mouth. Nice. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Little uh, chunky Potomac River large mouth. That thing flat murdered that chatterbait. And look at the backs. Look at the shoulders on these things here. These tidal fish are just a different deal. They fight like a champ. I thought I had a six pounder on. I'm going to get this guy back in the water and I'll show you what I caught him on. So I decided to switch it up. We talked to uh, Elmer back at the ramp and he said go subsurface. So I put on one of my favorite setups, which is a, uh, a Z-Man chatterbait with a little Zayco trailer on it and uh, from Yamamoto. And it's got that iridescent look to it. You can't see it as much. A little chartreuse in the belly, a little iridescent and some flash and crystal uh, look in the uh in the zayco and that thing just does it and that dirtier water i like to go with a little bit of a black uh and a green pumpkin to give it some contrast a little flash in the trailer and in the skirt and man that thing is freaking deadly all over the country all right guys that is going to do it for another day kayak bass fishing and all of the adventures that come along with it so Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video. Now we gotta load all this crap up.